All right, hello everyone, and welcome back to another video. I think you guys can see what's going on here. We've got a lot of official pace cars, not just pace cars too. We've got some official trucks as well over here. So this is going to be the long-awaited, long-promised Indy 500 video. Starting off all the way down on the end here. So I did, I have been going to the farmer's market. I went a second time tonight and grabbed some more stuff. Just a few more cars, including these guys. So we have a 1972 Hearst Oldsmobile. So this is an Olds 442. Uh, this is the Hearst, uh, Hearst Oldsmobile 442. Um, we have a 70, come on, give it, thank you. A 1970 Olds 442. So we have two of them. Although one being the Hearst, it is labeled a little different. We've got a 1998, oh boy, we've got a mess. I'm doing it again. <laughs> we've got a 1998 Chevrolet Corvette, another uh, official pace car. So each of these, if I haven't already mentioned, is uh, an official Indy 500 pace car. We've got a 1973 Cadillac Eldorado. So that is all of our pace cars. And now down here from Greenlight now, as opposed to Johnny Lightning, we have a 1984 GMC S15. And this is an official truck of the Indy 500, the 68th Indy 500 to be exact. And lastly, so it is gonna be a six car video. We've got possibly, probably, um, I guess aside from the tanks, probably the largest casting uh, ever to enter my collection. We have a 2017 Chevy Silverado 3500 HD. And this is uh, for the 101st running of the Indy 500. This is an official truck of the Indy 500. And this thing is absolutely enormous. There's a, a finger for scale. It is longer than one old Greg finger. <laughs> it is a big one. I hope it fits on the shelf. If not, I may have to park it somewhere else, but really cool truck. So I'm really excited about that one too. But let's get into some of this old stuff. And we are gonna take a few minutes to look at some of my other uh, Indianapolis Indy 500 cars. Here's another official pace car. The Turbo 1980, what year were you? focus oh 1980 so this is the turbo trans am the 1980 trans am um pretty cool i was really excited when i got that one here is another indy 500 car i don't think this is an official pace car but it's an indy 500 themed uh corvette c8 with the removable top if you remember that video if you haven't watched it what are you doing go watch it and then um Lastly, we have this one, one another one of my all-time favorites. If we can focus on it, the little Indianapolis Indy 500 uh, transportation, GMC transportation van with that big eagle on the side, just so 70s. If we look very closely here, we can get a date there. Mm, come on. Bear with me, folks. There we go. Uh, it says 60th, I think, annual Indianapolis 500 mile race, May 20th, 1978. So those are my Indy 500 vehicles that, oh, almost knocked the roof off, that I already have out. Let's get some more open. So we will start off down here, if I can sneak this out without causing too much chaos. Um, and once again, these are these guys are pretty old. Uh, this is 1999 playing Mantis. There you go. So another one really old, but I don't feel too guilty about opening these up simply because I got them for a pretty good price. Um, so let's get it out of the box. Bear with me for a second, guys. I just had kind of a revelation. I guess it would make more sense to open up the 442 first, and then we'll talk about the... Uh, the Hearst holds. So let's open up the 442 first. All right, so here is our 1970 Oldsmobile Olds 442. 
official Indy 500 pace car and what a stunning looking car this is absolutely love this thing so this is the 54th annual Indianapolis 500 mile race May 30th 1970 uh, so that would make sense that uh, 76 right so that is the 60th couldn't quite make that out anyway um, right so we've got a convertible old 442 here this is really sweet this is a really nice little car lots of great detail on the side there as you can see all the correct paint job and everything down to the 442 stop doing that down to the 442 badge on the fender can you not just just focus <laughs> um, it does have plastic tires being that it is an older Johnny Lightning but being that it's an older Johnny Lightning, it has mirrors. So you give and you get, I guess. Um, details in the grill are a little offish. We've got, oh no, no, it does look okay. Uh, it, for a second, it looked like the headlights were not detailed in, um, but they are. They're just the same color as the grill. So bring it around to the back here for a moment. See, do we have a, we do not have a license plate on there. There are your classic twin 442 taillights. I, one of my favorite taillights for uh, on a muscle car. Um, so I just had a 442 in my previous video, but I think I grazed right over some of the most important facts about a 442. Like, um, oh, I don't know, what does 442 stand for? <laughs> so, 442, it is not the engine displacement, it's not the horsepower, it's not anything like that. What it stands for is, originally the 442 was a performance package for the uh, Cutlass and I believe the F85 as well. What that gave you was a four-barrel carburetor, a four-speed manual transmission, and dual exhaust, so two pipes, 4-4-2. And then I believe in 1968, the 442 became its own car with the 400, uh, not small block, 400 big block, uh, or was it a small block? Oh, I always forget. I always get mixed up right around the, uh, the three, like the high threes and low 400s, because I know the 396 is a big block but I think there's like a 400 or 401 small block or something like that. Um, but you could also get the 455, which was obviously a big block. Um, obviously not a slouch of any type. Very, very fast car. Being released at the uh, peak of the muscle car era, it's pretty much what you'd expect. Really great looking car here. Let's take a look underneath real quick. We do have trouble focusing. Come on. There we go. Um, so it says 1999 playing Mantis. We, oh, look at that. Okay. So this printed label on here does say 1970 Oldsmobile 442. Uh, it goes along the bottom of the oil pan down the trans and cross there but it does say 1970 olds 442 so we do have our year make and model listed there which is very good it also comes with this really cool little collector's card so that'll go up on the wall up here in just a few moments and then we will take a quick look at our card now the 442 and the Hearst olds have the same card so I'm just gonna cover the one because we're not really missing anything by not going over the other one. Um, here we go. So this is part of our Johnny Lightning Official Pace Cars series. Uh, Indy 500 Official Pace Cars. Uh, it says... Collect all 12 there. On the back, we've got all 12s. So we got a 68 Torino, 69 Camaro... The 7442, we got that one. 71 Challenger, 72 Hearst Oldsmobile, got that one. 73 Eldorado, we got that one. 74 Hearst Oldsmobile, 77 Olds Delta 88, 78 Corvette, 79 Mustang, 92 Elante. I saw that one, but I didn't, I wasn't super duper into it. 
and the 98 Corvette convertible. We have that one too. So it says the Indianapolis 500 has established itself as the greatest spectacle in racing and the prestigious pace car has led the way through every year of the race's rich history. These stock production automobiles became part of the Brickyard tradition when they launched the inaugural race with a rolling start in 1911. The cars continued adding to the lore when they became part of the race winner's prizes in 1936 and began slowing the field during caution periods in 1979. Wow, so the winner of the Indy 500 gets the pace car. That's pretty cool. Uh, now Johnny Lightning brings these legendary cars to life with the official pace cars. Each historic vehicle features incredible detail, authentic paint jobs and trim, and 100% die-cast metal bodies and chassis. Race through history by grabbing all 12 official pace cars. So, very interesting stuff there. So now that we've got our fill of the 442 and we know everything we need to know about that guy, we will get him parked over here and move on to his big bad cousin. And just for the record, that does not have an opening hood on it, so that's why you never looked under the hood. But the Hearst Olds 72 Hearst Oldsmobile does have an opening hood. So under the hood there, we would have a 455, being that this is the Hearst. The Hearst got a hotter cam, different heads, just a bit more power. I think it had around 390? 390 horsepower? That sounds right. That sounds right, but I could be wrong. Um, it also got, obviously, it got a Hearst shifter, you know, naturally. Um, and just some other, you know, pretty run-of-the-mill performance upgrades, being that this is a 72. If you'll notice, our taillights are now three instead of two. I like the two better, but still a very, very good looking car. Absolutely love the paint job on this. The white and gold looks great. Um, there on the back, you can see your Hearst Olds logo there. And then our official pace car lettering. And if we get in real close, we can zoom in on the things that are 100 miles away in the background or focus. Come on, there we go. 56th annual Indianapolis 500 mile race, May 27th, 1972. So you got a 72 Oldsmobile. This thing was brand new when it was a pace car. Very, very cool looking car. I love the hood scoops on there. Those look awesome. Um, not super duper detailed on the interior, being that this is an earlier Johnny Lightning. Once again, we do have plastic tires. And uh, our year make and model is once again printed in ink across the, uh, the drive line there. We do have 1999 playing Mantis. So very interesting stuff, very cool looking car. And I'm really happy that I was able to find both of them. So now I have the 442 and, the, or I'm sorry, we have the, the uh, Hearst 442 and the regular 442. So, very cool stuff. We will get into next, our 1998 Chevy Corvette. Oh, I didn't show you. the. Uh, they all come with their own little collector card. So these will all be going up on the wall with all my other Johnny Lightning stuff and uh, green light cards and things like that. So, let us get our 1998 Chevy Corvette out of the box and I think this is my first fifth generation Corvette yes it is my first fifth generation Corvette I do not have one in this body style I have the body style after this and two of the body style before this but not any of this body style so that's pretty exciting so let's get it out of the box and take a closer look at it all right so here is our 98 Chevy Corvette. Now, the hood opens on this casting, but not like a ton. It doesn't really want to reveal to us its secrets. But if you can just about make out that silver stack of bananas in there, that is a dead giveaway. That is an LS1. Get that hood closed there. 
Um, this was the first year for the LS1. Uh, I'm sorry, 1997 was the first year for the LS1. This is technically a 98. But um, this was the first generation of Corvette to see the LS1, which is, in my opinion, one of the greatest engines General Motors has ever produced. Uh, 300 and, oh, what was it, 25 horsepower at 348 cubic inches. So although it is a 5.7 liter, it's not a three quote-unquote 350 small block. It's actually a 348 cubic inch small block V8. Um, it's uh, the LS. The LS is not a Vortec. <laughs> I just want to gloss over this real quick. It's a very common misconception. So the Chevy trucks of that era, um, everybody likes to pull those motors out of the trucks and call them LS motors. They're not LS motors. They're cast iron. They're Vortec motors. An LS engine is an aluminum block. That's what makes it an LS is the fact that it's aluminum. There was only like one year that there was an aluminum block Chevy V8 in a in a truck, and I think that was like 2005. But that's you know for another video. This being the first of the LS powered Corvettes um, really changed the game up. I mean these things were absolute performance monsters. Out of the box, you had plenty of horsepower. It's a simple engine, you know, push rods, two valves per cylinder, no overhead cam nonsense, none of all that extra moving parts and anything. They just made power and they made reliable power. They were absolutely awesome engines. Um, absolutely awesome car, super, super 90s nostalgia with this, uh, all this yellow wheels and just a very 90s-esque paint job on here. Yellow seats on the interior. You can uh, make out our nice Corvette interior there. This one's got a lot of nice detail um, on the inside. No license plate on the back. We do have our nice Corvette lettering across there and quad tip exhaust down there, if you can see that. It's had a very unique sound. Uh, another interesting thing about these early, or I shouldn't say early, but late 90s Corvettes is your transmission and gearbox was not up here. It was back here. All the gearbox and everything for weight distribution was located at the rear of the vehicle and was all done, all, everything was done through a huge long shaft that ran the length of the entire vehicle. That's how you got power from the engine back to the transmission. So, Interesting little fun fact about the fifth generation Corvette. Absolutely awesome car. All the detail we love to see. There's our little Corvette emblem on the front there. Yeah, that looks absolutely awesome. So on the side of this one, we have, what does it say? Indianapolis 500. Uh... May 21st, 1998, May 28th, 19th? I can't read that, uh, but it does say official pace car, and then there is another emblem there on the fender. Very, very cool looking car. I like it a lot. There's our little Indy 500 logo on the back corner there, the little wings and the tire in the middle. So we'll take a quick look at our card for this guy, if we can, if we can fit it on screen. This is uh, a little different from the other ones. This is the official pace car as Johnny Lightning. This one is from, what year are you from? 2000. Okay, so this is the... Okay, so it's the same stuff up here, but it's not quite as much information. It's pretty much the same stuff I just read. Uh, brings you six more legendary cars. Okay, so this is a different series than the uh, than the two Oldsmobiles. In this one, we've got a 96 Viper GTS, 67 Chevy Camaro, 64 and a half Ford Mustang, 82 Camaro Z28. I want that. 98 Chevy Corvette, right there. And our 68 Ford Torino. So that is a different series than the uh, the Oldsmobiles. But, oh, sorry. Didn't mean to bump you there again. 
but pretty much the same card as the, uh, the last two. So, oh man, we are at 20 minutes, and we still got three cars to get through. Yahoo! Here is our uh, our little trading card or collector card for the '98 Chevy Corvette. So we will get that parked over into the lot and move on to our 73 Cadillac Eldorado. All right, so here is our 73 Cadillac Eldorado official pace car. Uh, this is the uh, duh, 1973 official pace car. We've got the hood open here. It doesn't really seem to want to open all the way up, but uh, under the hood there, you do have your 500 cubic inch V8. That was the one of the largest, if not the largest, production V8s at the time. Um, made about 365 horsepower at the back of the crank. That was still the early 70s, so this is a 73, so they weren't completely strangled out by the, uh, the emissions. Ooh, whoopsies. Let's see if we can get our hood closed here. There we go. Very good looking car. Again, plastic wheels and tires on there, but uh, not too much of an issue. There are mirrors on there. Very, very bright red interior. So we'll take a quick look at the side here. It does say, a f <sighs> stop it. Cadillac official pace car, 57th annual Indianapolis 500 mile race, May 28th, 1973. We do have our Indy 500 logo there on the front fender. Very good looking car. I do have an Eldorado in my uh, collection somewhere. Somewhere. I believe it is the same casting as this one, but a uh, different paint scheme and a much newer release. But um, very cool stuff. I'll take a quick look underneath. We can get it up without snagging it. Uh, once again, they are laser printed on the bottom of there. 1973 Cadillac Eldorado. Um, what did the bottom of the Corvette look like? Did it? Ah, oh, look. The Corvette says, uh, yeah, that has, it's actually stamped into the base on the Corvette. 1998 Corvette. There you go. Very, very interesting stuff. Um, here's our little trading card that comes along with it. So there's the actual car. Wheels look a little different. The, uh, looks like the actual car had smooth hubcaps on it, whereas this has uh, Krager style wheels. But hey, close enough, right? So let's get this guy off the lift, and I want to, yeah, we are really chugging up there on the time. I want to get into these, I really do, because these are some pretty cool, pretty cool trucks. So we've got our 84 GMC S15 and the 2017 Silverado 3500. So what I think I'm going to do is crack both of these open and then pop one onto the lift at a time. Just because the, uh, the dually driver truck really has nothing interesting on the card. So we won't waste much time on that one. All right, so here's our 1984 GMC S15. Now this is an S15, not a Sonoma. These were called S15s before they were Sonomas, uh, very similar to the S10, because that's what they were, uh, basically the same truck. So this is our 68th uh, annual Indy 500, May 27th, 1984. That's what it says on our card here. There you go. Uh, this is an official truck of that race. We've got Indy Hauler written here on the back. Uh, it does have a removable tonneau cover. I think that's pretty neat. The wheels, honestly, are like my favorite, favorite, favorite thing about this casting. They're so cool looking. Um, definitely very 80s-esque wheels. Uh, there's your S15 badge on the fender there. Official truck, 68th. Indianapolis 500, May 27th, 1984. And then there's our Indy 500, <coughs> excuse me, uh, emblem right there on the back door. Very cool little truck. Yeah, the Indy Hauler. So I imagine it was just, you know, track supplies or maintenance or something. 
something of that nature. Similar to the uh, the 3500 over here. So being this is uh, an S15 84, 84, 84, I think these had the 2.8 liter V6s in them still. I don't know if they had the 4.3. Uh, if it did have the 4.3 liter V6, it was most definitely carbureted in 84. I don't think they went fuel injected until 1986. But we can't open the hood and see, so unfortunately we'll just have to guess. Very, very cool little truck though. I absolutely love it a lot. Looks really, really good. Get a nice good look at that. I don't think I've got a license plate on the back there. Did we check? Yeah, no plate. And then uh, on the bottom, now this is a green light, so everything should be printed. Uh, 1984 Chevrolet S10, there you go. Wait, Chevrolet S10? No. Oh. Interesting. It says Chevrolet S10, but this is a GMC. Whoops. Well, considering they're the same truck, they probably use the same base for both castings, so can't really blame them too much for that. Nice little GMC trucks sticker across the windshield there. I like that a lot. So we'll get him parked up into the parking lot take a quick look at our card as well we do have as always green light with their indy 500 uh series vehicles they have the winner from that year 1984 rick mears was our winner so very cool and now we will get this massive behemoth of a truck that is just going to <coughs> excuse me uh, just barely fit onto the lift, <laughs> um, but this is in fact an Indy 500 official truck. So you've got your 3500 HD badge on the door there. On the hood, if you look closely, you can see the Duramax lettering as well as a small badge next to it that should say Allison Transmission. So you have a 6.6 .6 liter Duramax turbo diesel V8 in this guy making three no what was it on the the newer ones are 445 445 horsepower and over not somewhere between 900 and a thousand foot pounds of torque so an absolute monster of a truck easily pulling down a house with this thing um <laughs> absolutely enormous nice little four by four badge or uh decal there on the back fender. Now, I have a coworker whose father used to own one of these, and uh, his was a 2013, but it was the High Country. So it was the fully loaded interior, uh, Duramax diesel, and when I tell you that thing was literally like driving a limousine because of the size of it and because of how nice it was inside. Look at those nice mirrors on there. Um, yeah, absolute absolutely awesome truck a bit much to handle on the roads they're very wide things about as wide as a tractor trailer <coughs> in the uh the rear i believe on the 3500 chevys they are eight feet wide in the rear which is uh as wide as you're allowed to be on the roads in the united states so it's the same width as a tractor trailer if i'm not mistaken um there's a little LTZ badge on the tailgate there. LTZ means that this does have a very, very high level of trim. The LTZ is uh, a step below the high country, but it's pretty much above everything else. Very, very awesome truck. Very big, big truck. Um, we'll take a peek underneath, and uh, I'm going to try not to vomit here. Ugh, ugh. It's a plastic base. Metal truck, plastic base. Now, I can only imagine the reason they do a plastic base on this truck is because it would probably weigh about 40 pounds if it had a metal base. So, gotta save weight somewhere. Um, but there's our 2017 Chevy Silverado, 3500 HD used under license. And like I said, this is part of the Greenlight Dually Drivers series, but it was literally just a box. It said dually drivers on it and had some of the other trucks in the series. 
which I have really no interest in because they're all construction vehicles and uh, like highway maintenance vehicles and stuff like that. But I did want the Indy 500 official truck just because it does have the regular bed on it. And it's an Indy 500 truck. So very cool stuff. We just walked past the 30 minute mark. So I think we're gonna go ahead and get ready to wrap this video up. So let's get everything loaded into the parking garage for one final look. All right, so starting off, once again, we've got our 1970 Olds 442. These are all of our official pace cars. So there's our 442, our 442 Hurst Olds. I think it's a 442. It might just be a Cutlass Hurst Olds. I'm, I forget. But there's our Hurst Olds. <laughs> Our 1973 Cadillac Eldorado official pace car, 1998 Chevy Corvette official pace car, and then upstairs we have our 2017 Chevy 3500 HD Dually. I don't know what I'm going to do with it, it's enormous. <laughs> the 1984 GMC S15 right next to our Mega Dually. Get a good look at him in there. And then, of course, down on the end, we do have my previously acquired Indy 500 themed cars the, uh, the Pontiac's an official pace car, and then the van and the Corvette. So, that's going to about do it for today's video. So, make sure if you enjoyed it, leave a like to let me know you did, comment and say hi. And hit that subscribe button for me too, and I will see you in the next video.